Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to top off my previous video, How to Create a Safe System, with uh, how to add in loading functionality for your Unity game. So, in the previous video, I talked about how I have this script called Game Control, which manages the game data, which is a serializable object. And this Game Control script is able to manage the data as the game progresses, because it's set up to not destroy itself as you load a new level. But also has functionality for saving and loading, so whenever you need to call save, you would just reference the game control script and the save method within. So likewise, the same thing whenever you need to load the game, we're going to be doing that same thing. So here I have a button, and this button is calling the game control .load game method, which we'll be talking about and going into the code in a minute here. So when we click on this load game button, it has the on click event where we load the game and that's a method called from the game control object and it's loading the game with the file name Joe. So in practice, what most games would do is actually have a menu system set up and that's going to be the next video about creating a menu. But as a basic proof of concept, this load game button is going to load the data and let's make sure that we have the game control selected here so that we can prove that and when it loads the game it also loads the previously saved scene which uh, the file should contain so let's go ahead and hit load game here you can see we changed scenes back to uh, test 2 which is the save scene I created for the previous video and we can see that information has been loaded up including the name of the save file the last save time and the name of the previously saved scene. So if we check out the actual code that's written here, loading the game is a bit simpler than saving the game actually. Uh, so the general idea here is we make sure that the save directory exists and if there's any special path, like I, I have a special folder called saved games, which all the saved games have to save into. So this check directory method is ensuring that the directory creates, uh, break, is ensuring that the directory exists and if it doesn't exist you create the directory using the directory class so once the directory is confirmed to exist we check to see if the file exists so that's going to be a combination of the base save path basically the directory location the name of the game which in this case was joe as we typed it into the button field and then adding in the file extension. So in this series, we're using the XML serializer. And one of the things I like about the XML file is that you can just open it up in, let's say, Notepad and see all of the data to confirm that everything there is working properly. And this would also allow a player to cheat so they could basically type in any amount of gold, any amount of experience points. So if you actually want to prevent the player from being able to do that, uh, you can use one of the other serialization options, but honestly, do you really care that much about players cheating if they really want to cheat? To me, it's fine. It's like people can play how they want to play. So anyway, if the file is confirmed to exist, which is checking the path, the name, and the file extension, it starts to deserialize the file, and we do that by opening up a new file stream. And we create an XML serializer of type game data. That's the type of object we're deserializing because we write to the file with the same object type and we deserialize it with the same object type. We create an XML reader so that we can read the data in the file. And then we use the XML serializer to deserialize. Note that the XML reader is created by passing in the file stream which is created by opening up the file path. So by doing that, the XML reader knows exactly the location of the file it's reading. And now that we have it open for reading, we can deserialize the file. So we use the XML serializer we created to deserialize the data that's being read by the XML reader. So you see the reader right here. And the data that it spits out after it deserializes is going to be type game data. So we want to specify that with as game data. And here I'm storing that in the game data field that's part of this class, the game controlled game data, which means it's overriding any active data. And then like every time we open up a file stream, we should close that. And the final thing I have it doing here is when we've loaded all the data, we also want to load the proper scene. 
So you do that by calling scene manager dot load scene. There's actually two different methods for loading the scene, load scene and load scene async, which means asynchronously, uh, which means that if you use the load scene async, it's not going to freeze up everything else that's going on in the game before it completes. Other things can operate in the background while it's loading the game. And uh, what we actually reference here, what scene are we loading? That's the saved scene inside of the game data. So let's just take one more quick look at game data. We did cover this in the last video, but primarily what it consists of is just a bunch of fields. Anything we want to save uh, in a permanent basis, data which we need to load if the player like gets a game over and needs to load the game, that all goes in here. Note that some things like a vector three can't be serialized, so it actually needs to be broken down into things like uh, three separate floats, X position, Y position, Z position, if you actually want to serialize that. And then we have the default constructor, and this is being called when the new game starts and a save file hasn't been loaded. So basically every time the, boot, the game boots up, these are the defaults that are being stored in the game control class. But as soon as the player loads a game, all of that changes and if at any other point you need to access those properties and change it you would just reference the game control and that's actually one reason why you want to have a static singleton instance of the game control object so that you can reference that in any other scripts very easily and that there will only always be one and then as i mentioned up here at the top you can see that when the game control object is initialized it just defaults with the game data using the default constructor but that can change at any point when you load the game or when you need to change a variable like health because the character's health dropped now that doesn't necessarily mean that every piece of data that changes needs to be stored in the game control in fact it might actually be better for the health to be on the character rather than in the game control but this is just one example of how you can get it to work so let's demo it one more time. So once again, when we click on this load game, it's going to check for the joe.xml file. And if that save uh, has been created before, it's going to go ahead and load the game. I believe it errors out if it can't find the file. And when it finds all the data, it loads that into the game control, which we can see right here. This information is not there by default. And it also loads the scene that was the current scene at the time of saving, which in this case was test two, because obviously that's where the save button is. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video on how to load your games. In the next video, we'll be covering creating a menu system because obviously uh, you don't usually load and save all of your games with a single button, but you might want multiple saves and you want them organized by file name or character name and we'll be working on that in the next video so until then i've been chris thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my future video content